Hello everyone Zombies Cat here. Today's story tells you just how superstitious the British really are. The distraught man sitting on the edge of his bed is named Gareth, and he suffers from a severe case of periscavidecatriophobia, the fear of Friday the 13th. On this day, he becomes nervous, fearful of bad luck, and often chants prayers while sitting in dimly lit rooms with closed doors, seeking isolation. As soon as his wife leaves the house, he locks the front door and phones his workplace, determined to stay at home for the day and keep the unexpected out. That's how Gareth has spent every Friday the 13th for nearly seven years, but today is destined to be an extraordinary day. A magpie is seen perched outside his window, and Gareth murmurs to it, reassuring himself that if he feels sad for it, then bad things won't have to happen. Don't know if what he says works, but the magpie flies away. However, the bad luck doesn't leave with it, and Gareth's day is just beginning. One thing leads to another, and Gareth has just turned on the radio when he hears the anchor saying that Friday the 13th is just nonsense. Gareth, who has a real sense of what it's like to be jinxed, calls in immediately and tries to argue with the anchor. While this is happening, the doorbell suddenly rings. A strange woman's voice comes from outside the door, startling Gareth so much that he hastily prostrates himself on the floor. He quickly turns off the radio, hangs up the phone, and closes the blinds to create the illusion that no one is home. Unexpectedly, the woman still finds him. Originally, she is delivering a package. Gareth wants her to leave the package at the door for his wife to bring inside when she returns from work. However, the package requires a signature. Otherwise, it will be sent back to the warehouse, waiting for next delivery on Monday. Gareth has no choice but to reluctantly open the door. From the moment the door opens, the butterfly representing bad luck flaps its wings. The courier explains that the electronic signing pen is broken, so Gareth must sign with a pen. However, Gareth realizes the pen is out of ink, and he has to rush back to find one. Unexpectedly, the courier ignores Gareth's repeated instructions and enters the house without authorization to use the toilet. Soon after, Gareth hears a call for help from the bathroom. It turns out the door handle is broken, and the door is completely stuck shut. Moreover, the courier suffers from claustrophobia, making the situation even more dire. She is trapped in a tiny toilet and could suffocate at any moment. Gareth has to find a screwdriver to pry the door open, but then a black cat enters uninvited, fleeing all the way to the second floor bedroom, where it hides under the bed and refuses to come out. Determined, Gareth tries desperately to get the black cat out of the house, even attempting to grab it with his bare hands, resulting in scratches to his clothes and the back of his hand. After failing to catch the cat, Gareth tries luring it out with a ball of wool, and he uses the sofa to catch it but in vain, the black cat disappears. Continuing his pursuit, Gareth finally corners the black cat in the second floor bathroom. This time, he grabs the shower and tries to wash away the symbol of bad luck, but ends up getting drenched himself. Despite the twists and turns and the damages incurred, the black cat eventually leaves. Just as Gareth is about to go downstairs to proceed with prying the door open, he sees a ladder blocking the stairs. The courier couldn't wait any longer so she has called a locksmith to break down the door. To prevent theft, the locksmith moves everything from his car into Gareth's house, so Gareth has to risk going over the stairs and stepping over the shoebox and ladder to get down. Unfortunately, his tie gets caught in the ladder, causing further frustration. Angry and annoyed, Gareth decides to cut off his tie to free it from the ladder. Hardly out of trouble, Gareth accidentally runs into a horseshoe hanging in the doorway, knocking it upside down. He tries to rectify the situation when the locksmith opens the door, knocking Gareth to the ground and leaving the horseshoe still upside down. God, please, no! Gareth urges the locksmith to hurry up and rescue the courier so that the two of them could leave his house quickly. Unexpectedly, the locksmith even brings his granddaughter along, as his daughter-in-law had to attend band practice and left the girl in his care. Just then, a woman, dressed in a strange costume with her head adorned with peacock feathers, bursts through the door, stunning Gareth. He is taken aback by her striking appearance. Confused as to why this particular Friday the 13th seems especially bad, Gareth notices the locksmith's shoes on the table. Before he can process further, the little girl throws salt for warding off evil spirits in his face. The locksmith manages to pry the door open, but they discover that the bathroom mirror is missing a screw, posing a danger of shattering at any moment. Panicked, Gareth rushes to stabilize the mirror. Frustrated by the string of misfortunes on this day, Gareth complains about the historical misfortunes of Friday the 13th with bad luck. However, the locksmith and the courier refute him, citing examples of good things that happen on Fridays, such as the subsequent weekend for enjoying fish and chips or finding great deals on Black Friday. As they converse, the locksmith realizes that his watch has stopped for 13 minutes. This seemingly trivial incident pushes Gareth over the edge, prompting him to kick the door open and regain his freedom. 
Upon returning to reality, Gareth is bewildered to find his wife home early, accompanied by a stranger, a psychiatrist. It dawns on him that the events of the day were orchestrated by his wife and the psychiatrist to cure his Friday the 13th phobia. The locksmith, courier, and others were all actors and actresses involved in exposure therapy designed to challenge Gareth's irrational fears. Reflecting on his fear of Friday the 13th, Gareth recalls a traumatic event from his past, a fatal bus accident that occurred on October 13th many years ago. He attributes his phobia to survivor's guilt, a manifestation of post-traumatic stress disorder stemming from that incident. At this point, his wife brings in a mirror and asks Gareth to break the mirror, to shatter his fear of Friday the 13th and dispel the demons that have tormented him for seven years. As the mirror shatters, Gareth's bad luck seems to dissipate along with it. The doorbell rings, and the caller happens to be the anchor of the radio program Gareth was listening to at the beginning of the story. Gareth, in a stroke of luck, turns out to be the number one millionth caller and wins the £130,000 prize. The radio anchor, who has millions of followers across the internet, arrives at the door to deliver the prize in person and record an exclusive interview. Surprisingly, the mascot he brings along is none other than the black cat, the symbol of bad luck. Gareth receives the £130,000 prize from the black cat on Friday the 13th, but this time, he isn't scared at all. He's overwhelmed with joy. It all feels like a dream. Gareth wakes up from his dream. Why is it still Friday the 13th? Had everything that had just happened been Gareth's dream? Had he never been cured of Friday the 13th syndrome? It's a good thing that his wife hurriedly reminds Gareth that he forgot to turn the calendar, that it's already Saturday, and that everything that happened yesterday was true. To verify the effectiveness of the treatment, the wife opens the package delivered by the courier yesterday, which turns out to contain an umbrella. She asks Gareth to open the umbrella to prove that there's no such thing as bad luck. Gareth bravely opens the umbrella in his room and finally breaks free from his fear. Seeing her husband fully recovered from his illness, the wife finally puts her heart at ease and takes the umbrella out to work. Gareth puts on his headphones and listens to the radio as usual, immersed in the joy of being free of his phobia. Unexpectedly, at this moment, there's a bang outside the window, and his wife is knocked to the ground by an oncoming vehicle. This story is a great collection of British superstitions, and it's hard to imagine that the seemingly elegant and laid-back Brits would be convinced of all sorts of bizarre superstitious customs. But does Friday the 13th really exist? Gareth actually came back from the accident on Friday the 13th, and he was the only one in his class who survived. Shouldn't that be considered the luckiest day of his life? People like to attribute coincidences to certainty, hence the superstitions. The black cat, a symbol of bad luck, can also be a harbinger of good fortune in other cultures. Passing under a ladder is not necessarily bad luck. Seeing a peacock feather is not necessarily bad luck. Leaving your shoes on the table is not necessarily bad luck. Smashing a mirror is not necessarily bad luck. From a certain point of view, this story expresses that things are unpredictable and luck and misfortune cannot be predicted. But Gareth in this story is unfortunate. If his wife is killed in a car accident, then Gareth's illness will not only come back, but it will get worse. Actually, this kind of fear is common for every one of us. It doesn't have to be a specific disease. It's something that many people probably have to a greater or lesser extent. It's a mind struggle, a paranoia that's hard to heal. The point is, when you can hardly let go of the knot and ready to step over the hurdle, all of a sudden you find that you hit a wall head on and the way of life is completely closed. It's really very desperate. Thanks for joining Zombies Cat on this movie. Abduct the subscribe button, hit the bell, and stay me out of this world. Until next time, keep those reels rolling. Zombies Cat signing off.